All righty, guys. Welcome back to the Identity Project. Today, I have a very special guest, the founder and CEO of Stronger You Nutrition. Mike, what's going on, my man? How are you? What's up, Justin? I'm happy to be here. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Dude, I'm, uh, I'm excited to, to have you on the show. Like we were talking before this, I uh, think I first ran across you on Cody Boom Boom's podcast and really enjoyed y'all's conversation there. Um, and then I think we, I, we're in the same precision nutrition group um, and, and kind of ran across one of the posts on that. But dude, everything that you've done over the last four years, four or five years here has been, uh, you know, nothing short of amazing. And I'm excited to, to be able to dive into that story. But first, let's take you back, man. Where were you, where were you born and raised? I was born in Newburgh, New York. Uh, it's about 65-ish miles north of New York City. They'll consider us upstate. The upstate people in New York consider us downstate. So <laughs> we're not a, you know, Hudson Valley, beautiful area, lots of hiking, lots of cool stuff to do outside. Uh, relatively fun area. I, I left and lived in San Diego for a short time, six months before I missed everyone back home. That's when I was like 23. And now I'm just settled here, have a house, about to get married. So life has uh, kept me around this area and I like it. Very nice. Yeah, man. Congrats on uh, getting married there. When's the big day? Uh, July uh, 13th this year uh, in New Paltz, New York. So about 20 minutes away. Very nice. Very nice. That's exciting. Congrats on that. Thank you very Uh, much. Dude, tell me a little bit about, uh, and I'm sure you've shared your story with your audience a million times, but you know, for those of you that, that don't know Mike, like, what type of kid were you kind of growing up through those elementary school days? Were you, were you into sports? Were you, you know, what type of kid were you? Yeah, I was a super active little string bean kid. I was super skinny. I was super shy. Uh, had, you know, my group of friends wasn't like overly popular kid. Uh, but I was, uh, I was just a very active kid, probably ate too much junk food. But at that age, I could work it off through playing lots of basketball and playing tag and baseball and all that fun stuff growing up. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you, man. I, I, uh, I think, I mean, obviously thinking back, it's like our parents did the best that they could and you know, it's like, you only know what you know, but yeah, there was, I had a time growing up where I got strep throat 12 times in one year. Oh man. (laughs) I'm a big believer that it was due to the just terrible food that I was eating inside and out of the house. So yeah, I mean, my my mother took, good care of me but there was there was a lot of kool-aid a lot of hot dogs and tater tots and spaghettios which i think are delicious but they're not the best thing in the world oh yeah no i i hear you man (laughs) and it's it's funny though you know it's like everyone's on their own journey you know like even even as even when i first started in the field 10 years ago i mean as a personal trainer like i was eating like frozen lean cuisines and thinking i was healthy you know oh yeah the 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 word lean is there right (laughs) right the marketing buzzwords in nutrition are are crazy even back then i mean remember the snack wells the the like cakes and cookies that were like we're healthy and it was like just a little bit less calories yeah oh yeah yeah it's amazing what uh, some of these brands are doing with marketing but um so so taking it back so go, growing up like i guess through the like did, were you an only child did you have brothers and sisters what did that dynamic look like yeah, i have a i have a sister so she's like six years older than me so i was like the kid that would like tag along probably annoy her and her friends because i was like the little brother but she was awesome um I actually have, it's actually really funny. I have like a permanent little bump on my head because she hit me with a door trying to break into her room one time. So that's kind of a funny story. And she, um, actually our wedding after party is going to be at her house in New Paltz. So that's pretty cool. Nice. Nice. That's awesome, man. So what did the transition to, to middle school? You, you, we were talking before this and you said that y'all's, y'all's new office is, is like right by your elementary school, which is awesome. Um, yeah. but what did, um, it, like, as you kind of transitioned into those middle school years, did you, did you change? Did you feel that, you know, it's, it's interesting looking at like elementary school to middle school to high school. Did you feel like a, a shift there? I honestly feel like I was very similar going from elementary school, middle school and high school. I was so shy, kind of an insecure kid, um, totally normal kid, but I just, I was just one of those shy kids. I didn't really, you know, I talked to my friends and things like that, but I didn't really strike up many conversations. Uh, if I remember going, if I was anywhere with my mother at her friend's place, I was just like hanging by her. It's actually kind of crazy because people don't look at me as like the shy kid. They think of me as really outgoing. And I think the internet actually allowed me to open up a lot. 
And if, if you put me in a room with people I don't have anything in common with, I'll probably be pretty quiet. But if you start talking to me about like stronger you and fitness stuff or nutrition or something I am actually interested in, I, I'll go for hours and hours. Yeah, man, that resonates with me a lot. I, I definitely, I don't know if you'd categorize yourself as like introverted or whatever, but I mean, I was, I was, I was the kid that uh, failed his, his speech um, test or whatever, because I literally just read my note card the whole yeah. entire time. I didn't look up a single time. But then like later in life had an accomplishment of like speaking in front of 350 people. But the shift was the difference in like passion, you know, it was the passion project versus something I could care less about. I just had to present on, you know? Yeah, I think, and I took public speaking when I was in college and stuff. And, and, you know, if you talk about something you actually know, it's very easy to do once you get going. But if you don't know what you're talking about, you're really afraid of, of embarrassing yourself. And that might be why I didn't speak up that much. Maybe I didn't really know who I was, what I was trying to do, what I was all about. And I just kind of kept quiet a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. I mean, even like, even now, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely much more social, but I agree. I think, I think it's only because of what the internet did. You know, I think it's because of platforms like this. And, you know, I think it's also like, I mean, even interacting with clients, I feel like clients actually open up a lot easier, you know, doing a zoom call or, or over the phone versus sometimes in person, just because, you know, it's like anything when you first meet sometime someone, you know, it's kind of a little awkward, right? And I think that's awesome for the business and this industry. Now that we can help so many people who we may not have helped if we had to do it all in person. And when I got my start in the field, I was trying to train people out of my garage. And I don't know if I was maybe not very good at it because it was in person, but being on the internet allowed me to do what I think I was actually good at. Yeah, that's awesome. So um, talk to me a little bit about kind of the high school years for you. I mean, did you ever fall into the trap? Anybody that's listening to this that knows my story. I mean, I was the 16, 17, 18 year old kid was, was, a, was a bad kid. Those were some, some bad times in my life. But did you, did you ever get into trouble or anything like that going <laughs> no, up? Or? Man, I was, I was super chill, man. I think like the worst trouble I ever got in was like probably shooting a BB gun where I shouldn't have shot one. I didn't do, I mean, I, you know, I, had a couple drinks in high school, things like that. But I wasn't the kid that was um, making my mom really worry. She was, she was the type of parent that was like, just let me know where you are. And I think that, you know, that permission and trust to know that like, I'm not like a crappy person and I'm not going to go do anything crazy made me stay in check a little bit. I think if she was more overbearing, I would have rebelled a little bit, but I didn't have to. Got it. I'm a, I'm, I have a boring story. I know you want something really exciting there. <laughs> I, no, I mean, it's, I, it's, it's always interesting. I mean, cause I take everybody back and I go through their story yep. and like, there's some people that, you know, they, they did have issues. There's others that didn't. And, and it's just interesting seeing like, you know, how these people, like basically everything that formed these people up into this point, you know, it's like, oh yeah. I'm a big believer in that everybody has a story. And like, I, I think that everybody should tell their story because it could help others. I think a lot of people are scared to, to tell their story and to be transparent and vulnerable. And I was too, like for 10 years, you know, but once I did, I think that it was almost like a boulder lifted off my shoulder. Um, but anyways, enough about me. Back to, uh, to high school. Was there a sport that you kind of, uh, you know, gravitated towards? Did you go like single sport once you got into high school? Or were you so I actually sport? never played high school sports. I never oh, wow. actually cared to. I was super into basketball. I played hours every single day. But I never really cared to play um, high school. And I, I like to joke that like I was actually too good to be picked and they wanted to give other kids a chance. But that's probably not true. Um, I was pretty good at, at most sports. Uh, I only played the ones I was good at, like football, basketball, baseball. Um, but never really played in, in the organized uh, within high school. Got it. Got it. Man, so what did you do with all that extra time? I feel Dude, like I, I, I played just wreck. Like I just okay. played – with my friends i played video games i played all kinds of games outside um i wasn't really you know i didn't wrestle didn't do any of that stuff i I mean looking back i probably would have tried but i didn't care enough you know i just i went home and i shot hoops and just chilled out yeah 
Did you, um, was there a, a subject in school at all that you were interested in? Like, I mean, what did kind of the, the college situation look like for you? <laughs> so this is where things get kind of funny. Um, I had no clue what I wanted to do. I had no real interest. I, I loved basketball. I loved basketball cards and all that stuff, but like, I'm not going to open a basketball card shop. That's not, that doesn't sound like a great idea. Uh, so I went to a local community college because I didn't want to waste my mom's money or my own time going away to school. And I had a lot of friends locally, some friends younger, some older that were still in town. And I was, again, I was a shy kid. I didn't want to, I didn't want to go off to a school and be like all homesick and everything and be like, wow, I just ruined my, you know, my education over here and, and a lot of money. So I went to a community college. Uh, I enrolled for electronical engineering and then all the math intimidated the hell out of me. And I was like, no way am I doing this. So I kind of just transitioned to liberal arts stuff, messed around for a lot of years, uh, went part time, remember working at Best Buy, like dealing with like CDs and PS2s and all that crap. And then I um, finally graduated from there, I think three, three years later, and I was working in banking. And then I just kind of chilled with that for like seven years. Wow. Wow. That's quite yeah. the, the story. So when did you, God, man, I, I think back, I mean, even, even me, I mean, I, I, I had no idea what I wanted to do going into school, you know, and I, I, and I think that, you know, as basically, you know, as a father now, right. Like I, my wife and I just had a, a kid about eight weeks ago. And so oh, congrats, man. Thank you. Thank you. But you know, I'm thinking about it and I'm like, man, this whole college thing, and you hear so many different people's thoughts on it. I mean, I, I was listening to, uh, I think Tom Bilyeu earlier today and he was, you know, he was talking about like in 15 years that he, he doubts that the college like framework is even going to be there or, or as important. And, um, you know, I just wish that I would have had more conversations with people before going into school because I mean, yeah, it, for me, it was just like, Hey, go to school because that's what you're supposed to do to get a good job. And, I didn't know what I wanted to do and probably, probably till right after I finished my basics. Right. And, and I'm, you know, I'm fortunate now things have worked out, but when I went to community college and there was a job fair and I got a job in a bank and then I was like, okay, cool. I could work in banking at that point. It was okay money. And I was like, all right, I'll just come up in the banking world and I'll be a manager. And I eventually got there and then I'm like, this kind of sucks. I don't really like this. And then I went back to school online. Uh, actually, no, sorry. I went, uh, I was enrolled in school because I wanted to teach. I wanted to be an educator. Part of the reason was, wow, I get summers off. Now I realize that my fiance is a teacher. They work a lot more than you think they do. And it's, it's pretty incredible. So I went back to school, but then my mother passed away and I had to become like man of the house, pay the mortgage, pay the bills. So I had to go back to work full time and I had to drop out of school pretty much. Wow. And how old were you then? Uh, 23. Wow. Pretty much right when I moved back from San Diego. Wow. I'm so sorry yeah, to hear that. Yeah, that's, thanks, man. That's, uh... Man, yeah, so I, I wanted to be about... a teacher and I couldn't, I had to, I had to work and I went back to school. I'm sorry. I went back to work full time. And then I was like, well, what can I do? Maybe I'll try this online school thing. And I went for human resources and eventually got into that field that my last job before I started all this stuff. Wow. And so can you talk about like the I mean, you know, obviously a lot of people come to us with struggles outside of nutrition, right? And there's, you know, a lot of the times when people come to us and they want to lose weight or, or this or that, you know, a lot of the times it's a lot deeper than that. It's, it's, it's emotional and it's stemming from something much more than, you know, I want to lose 10 pounds, right? Right. So, I mean, when you had that trauma happen to you in your life, like, like what did you do to kind of help yourself like get over that? I mean, I'm sure there was probably a period of time of, you know, just having to deal with everything, but did, did you do something? Did you have a strategy that kind of like picked you up and like inspired you to keep moving forward? Yeah. I mean, it's just kind of like when it happens that quick, um, like she found out or we found out she had cancer on a Monday. She died on a Thursday. It was just crazy. Wow. And it's like at 23 that you just moved back home from San Diego. You don't really know what the hell you're doing with your life. And you're just like, wow, I have to grow up on Friday. You know, like you have to just like take care of things. And I had an amazing group of friends. I, I'm still friends with almost all of them. 
and it just kept me busy. You know, we had a ton of fun together. We always did stuff every weekend, uh, even weeknights we'd get together and hang out. So I had a really good crew of people around me at that point. Yeah, that's important. So important. Um, so what were you doing exactly like in terms of like human resources? Like what, what, what did that look like for you? And then I'm probably more interested in what led you into the jump, you know? Yeah, it was, uh, not the most fun stuff. It was, uh, it was like a really, it was a really good company. We, um, we staffed nurses in homes of like, uh, medically fragile children. So it was like really good work to do. Uh, I did a lot of the payroll stuff, some of the interviewing, um, all the like the disability 401k stuff, like, you know, HR generalist type stuff. Wasn't that exciting. Didn't really feel that fulfilled. And in the back of my, you know, in my mind, I was always like, well, fitness stuff is really fun. This is kind of what I'm into. I wonder if I could make this a job somehow. And I tried to do, you know, I had every idea from like, you know, somehow getting a loan for a box truck and driving around to people's houses with gym equipment and being like a traveler, traveling trainer. I'm like, how the heck can I do that when I work full time? So then I thought, all right, I'll build a gym out in my garage and I'll train people there. And then I said, well, it's probably not worth it if I can only train for one to two hours a night or for one person. So I was like, all right, let me try to do the CrossFit thing. So I tried, I affiliated with CrossFit. I had CrossFit Newberg, uh, did it for about a year and it just, it just didn't pick up. I thought, you know, the whole, the saying, if you build it, they will come. I did it. I had awesome equipment, had a nice paint job in there. Thanks to my friend who owns a painting company. I thought, wow, I got it. I'm going to get enough people in here. I'm going to bust at the seams. Then I'll went, I'll rent a warehouse and I'll live happily ever after working, you know, 80 hours a week and having six jobs as a CrossFit gym owner. But, uh, it didn't work out over the year. And I was like, well, crap, what do I do? Do I, do I just hang it up and do it as a hobby or do I keep trying to make this thing work? And I, I realized the, the thing people needed was nutrition. No one knew how to eat. And I thought I had a way to fix that for people. And we just kind of just started talking about it and got a few clients and it, it grew. Yeah, man, that dude, that resonates with me a lot. I, Cause I, there was a kind of like a two way street for me where it was like, I was a personal trainer and I was in school, just finished basics and you know, all personal trainers, I feel like do like kinesiology route. Um, and I was like, man, I really like, I have all these certifications. I really don't want to go down the kinesiology route. And so I was like, all right, I'm going to go nutrition, which required me to go to Texas women's university mm -hmm. because where I live, that was like the only place offering nutrition. So I'm like the only guy in my class, you know, maybe like one or two or three guys. And so, you know, it's, it was an interesting dynamic to say the least, but, but yeah, man, I mean, for me, it was like, here I was doing personal training and always seeing that nutrition was the missing link you know, really in nutrition and lifestyle habits were the missing link, you know, that habit based coaching model that precision nutrition, you know, throughout however long ago, I mean, it, it makes sense, you know, like a lot of the times people go into this like all or nothing mentality. And in reality, it's like, let's just identify like the worst habit that you have. And like, let's improve that. Right. And for most people, it's get the hell to sleep, go to sleep, yeah. stop being so stressed, start planning, uh, fix your food environment, Learn how to not get in trouble and really see what you're doing and, and track your food and, you know, analyze what's going on and talk to people. And dieting is a really lonely experience for many people. And that's something that I made, I tried to fix right off the bat. I didn't want anyone to feel like they were in this alone. Mm, yeah. You know, I think that that's one thing. A lot of people talk about sleep. They talk about nutrition, hydration, exercise, whatever. But I think a lot of people forget to talk about the human connection and the relationship piece. And, you know, just like what you said with community, I mean, I think that's something CrossFit did a phenomenal job with was that community aspect, but how do we, how do we bring community into this online world where, you know, maybe you're not actually seeing people in person. Um, so, you know, obviously it starts with one client, it starts with one success story, but can you kind of talk to, I mean, you know, thinking about the first clients and now, I mean, obviously that's a, that's a, that's a long period of time, but what were some of the, maybe some of just the, the, the roadblocks, the hurdles, the challenges almost, you know, I think of like a staircase when it comes to this and you know, what were maybe some of those, those bigger challenges that you had to really overcome? I think one of the, the hardest things for me was like, 
understanding what was actually going on. I thought I would just help a few people on the side and it just kept growing. And I had to figure out how to offer the same level of service that I did with one person when I had a couple hundred people. And I didn't want service to ever go down. And something I'm really proud of with Stronger You and how we've built it now is our level of service is better than ever. And we're so much bigger than we were. And that's something I don't think is, is very common with growing businesses. Usually the member experience suffers. The product might be good. You know, the nutrition coaching might be the same, but the connection and the relationship might dwindle down. And that's, that's actually improving. So that was probably the hardest part for me, which was not letting service slip. And one of our coaches, Nick, was telling me, he's like, hey, I know you talk a lot about how um, you, you could service so many people well because you had to. And he said, I don't think you did it because you had to to make the company grew. You did it because people paid you for something and you couldn't allow yourself to get worse because it's not fair to anyone. You know, and that's yeah. just a lot of trial and error, being addicted to my cell phone, uh, having conversations with very close people around me saying, hey, I, I have to do this. Like, this is the, the dream. I need, I need to do this and I need to help a lot of people. And that includes like working my ass off. Yeah. You know, I think it's, it's interesting once you find something you know, where you, you, you start feeling like fulfilled in life, you start feeling like you actually have purpose. And a lot of the times I feel like it's helping people, you know, whether it's through nutrition coaching or through whatever, but you know, it was, it's, it's interesting. Like once you find that, once that fire gets lit, then it's like, it almost becomes like your oxygen going forward. I mean, right. And, and at that point, like I never had, I never had a purpose, you know, even elementary school, high school, middle school, college, what the heck am I going to do with myself? And then this thing takes off and I'm like, holy crap. Like I can't, I can't let this stop. It was, it was crazy. Yeah. So, so the other side of it, you know, obviously where you're about to get married now, so, so <laughs> everything worked out, but, but can you talk about maybe the, I mean, addicted to my cell phone, right? I mean, I'm married as well. And it's like, I think that there, that's a really interesting conversation. You know, that whole like idea of balance or whatever you want to call it. What are your thoughts on, on that, especially on kind of the relationship side of growing a business? So I think, um, I, it's, it's a weird dynamic because I think a lot of people talk about the work-life balance, but I think that has to be earned. I think if you really want to make something happen, you have to do what it takes. And that will affect other people and it will require difficult conversations and sacrifice and stuff like that. But uh, Krista, my fiance, was so cool about it. I mean, she would just be like, all right, I get it. And I would set times. I would try to get off the phone at certain times. So I did everything I could to balance it. And most of our growth in the beginning was when I still had a full-time job. So I'm balancing Stronger You, I'm balancing a full-time job and a new relationship and trying not to mess up any of the three. Yeah, it's like a juggling act, right? Yeah, I mean, but again, like I had people committed to me that I needed to service and that did include hiding in the bathroom and answering text messages or staying up late. It, I mean, it's, it's crazy to think about what I had to do and I would do it all over again if I had to. Yeah. I mean, I still do. I'm still, I am so connected to everything. I'm probably a pain in the butt to everyone that works for us, but cause I know everything that's going on at like all times, even when I was just away this last week in Mexico, I'm on my phone. I'm probably working mo more than I used to at my old job when I'm on vacation now just because I love it. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, the saying it's like, if you love it. It's, it's not work, I guess. I mean, it is work, but it's, yeah. it's, it's different, right? It's just, it's different. So it I get is. it. Man. There's people depending on it now, you know, it's not just me. If I mess it up, I'm the only one that suffers. It's 65 people work here. Yeah. Like that's, that's my motivation. Yeah. Have you ever found yourself in periods of um, maybe not prioritizing yourself first so that you can be that person for your team and everyone else? <laughs> yeah, man. There's All the time I'm like, eh, I don't need to work out today. I have work to do. But I, I figure ways to do it. I'll wake, I'll wake up a little earlier. I'll set my cell phone in, a, in another room. 
I'll have like certain like personal rules I'll have to hit like, all right, I need to work out four times this week and I'll try to figure out where I can do it. And a lot of times that might include, you know, workouts that I don't think are necessarily the best, but something is better than nothing. But yeah, man, my, my sleep sometimes was suffering. Now I'm, I sleep like a baby, but before when I was like the only guy on the team and answering all the inquiries and everything, I mean, now we have a team of admins that can help, but I would wake up in the middle of the night and answer emails. Cause I would say, wow, they're going to be so impressed by my response time. They're definitely going to join us. Oh yeah. I, and I, I think it helped. I can't, you know, I don't know, but I know that a lot of people respond really slowly and I know a lot of people have crappy service, not, not, our industry, just everyone. And I didn't want to be like that. I wanted to give a better experience and a good first impression right off the bat. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Yeah. I mean, honestly, that's probably, so we, I started, I've been in the field for almost 10 years, but I started, I coach nutrition a little over a year ago and we have a team of six now. Um, but yeah, it's, it's interesting. So when did you, I mean, like what actually made you were running both businesses, right? So, I mean, what was the, 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 the push and the shove to finally say, all right, I'm going all in. <laughs> Dude, I mean, I was in denial for a while. I mean, I was very, very fortunate that probably my second month doing it, I could have quit because the income from the nutrition company was more than my salary, but I didn't believe it. I had money saved up. I had a, a number in my head that I said, when I have this much money saved up, which was, you know, six months of emergency funds, I will leave my job. But when I got there, I was like, no way in heck can I do this. I don't think I'm ready. And then I talked to a lot of my close friends and, and Krista and some people were like, dude, just do both. Why would you quit? You can get, you know, two, two sources of income. But then other people were like, dude, if you quit or, or if you don't quit, that might be costing you more money and more potential growth. You might be holding yourself back by keeping that job. So I did it for a year actually a, a year and one month, I kept my full-time job and did Stronger You at the same time. And then I just decided, Krista was like, dude, you, if you quit and it doesn't work, like we'll be okay. And I was like, crap, man, like I just got to try it. And I remember doing it Memorial Day weekend, 2016. And I was like, well, I just walked out of my job. Like I put a month month notice in I didn't spend my paychecks for like the last five or six weeks. I maxed out my 401k. I made damn sure that I could do it. And I think that's something a lot of people kind of jump to. They, they're like, all right, month two, I'm going to quit. I think you got to make sure it's good. And I, I waited maybe longer than I should have. I don't know. I'm happy where everything is now. So I think it was the right move. Yeah. Yeah. So were you... Um what are your thoughts around, you know, cause for me, it was actually kind of like a, a mentor that, that kind of pushed me over the head, like a business coach. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, and it was, it was almost like, man, like somebody actually believe, like they said, you know, you have potential to, you know, make a name for yourself in the nutrition industry. And I, like just that one sentence, the one person that like believed right. in me, it was like all I needed to finally believe in myself. What are your thoughts around mentor, you know, you hear mentorship, mastermind, yep. all this fluffy stuff, but like, what are your thoughts on like, you know, mentors, business coaches? Like, was there anybody like that for you in your life? So I, I had a couple of my early clients that were like local entrepreneurs that really knew what they were talking about in that, in, you know, the business ownership and, and entrepreneurial world. They weren't in the fitness world but their knowledge and their experience kind of led me to, you know, they were part of the reason I did it. I remember meeting them the day before I put in my month notice at work and they were like, dude, you got to do it. Like you can, it's, it's happening. How isn't this going to work out? And at that point I was like, holy crap. All right. Like I'm, I'm doing it. And it was scary as hell. And I, I like the idea of mentors, but I also don't really, I don't know. I think a lot of people get, preyed upon by a lot of business coaches in this field. And it's always weird to me because I think a lot of the people that are doing business coaching probably shouldn't be, they should probably be working on their own businesses and coaching that. And that's what I do. Uh, a lot of people ask me, they're like, do you, do you want to business coach people? Do you want them to do this? And I'm like, right now? No, 
we have a we have a business to run and i would rather put all my effort into that yeah yeah i love that i love that so um what you know as you were kind of making that transition there i mean i'm just interested like did you ever work with a coach yourself or what, like what, what made you think that the service was bad and, and what, what were the things that you wanted to see change to, to give a better customer experience? So I was just watching everything. I, I did have a coach. He was great. Um, so it wasn't based on him, but it was just service and industries in general, like everywhere you went, service was terrible. You might have gotten what you wanted. Like for example, a a landscaper, right? Cool. My grass is cut, but they never call me back. They're late. They're not dependable. And anytime there's an issue, they never fix it. So to me, it's like, I don't want to be like that. I want this nutrition company to be the best experience and the company every one of our members brag about. I want I want to be a company that people are just proud to be a part of, whether you work here or you're a customer of ours. And I, I learned so much about what to do by doing what every other company wasn't doing. Hmm. I love that. What were, who were some of the, I know, you know, obviously we kind of linked up through precision nutrition and I think that was the first influence, but what were some of those early, early influences for you um, when you were first getting started? Uh, Trevor Cashy, awesome dude. So damn smart. Um, Alex Viata, Mike Isretel, um, Lyle McDonald, even though he's like mean to me. Um, those are the guys like Eric Helms, uh, Andy Morgan. These guys are so just so damn smart and just following what they say and, and seeing like the actual research and evidence behind what we're doing is is so cool because I'm not a scientist. You throw studies at me and cool, I could kind of understand what's going on, but the the practical application of these things is where where I shine. And that, I thank those guys for really introducing me to a lot of these concepts. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think honestly, I think some of the best coaches in the world are the ones that can take that information, that research, whatever, that's, you know, more complex for the gen pop and present it in a way that you know is entertaining and educational you know and and really you know like you said is is actually applicable to their own life you know oh yeah it's i mean these concepts are can be really simple or they could be they could make your head spin so you we have to as coaches have to figure out what the heck is being said and who that matters for like when we talk about nutrient timing i can tell you know, the, the general public fat loss client, Hey, it doesn't matter. Just eat these macros or eat this amount in this, you know, 24 hour period. But someone that's like going on a, you know, ultra marathon, holy crap, let's talk about nutrient timing. Cause this is going to matter. Yeah. And we have to know who the heck we're, we're dealing with, you know? Yeah. Well, and I think that's the beauty of, you know, I think a lot of people are doing this now, but like the one-on-one individualized coaching versus maybe, Hey, here's a meal plan. Good luck or, or whatever, you know? And I, and I'm, I am such a big believer. I mean, there's tons of nutrition coaches, there's tons of nutrition coaching companies, but like, I am a huge believer that the separator is in the customer experience. It's it's in, you know, (laughs) the coach's ability to build, to build rapport with that client and build a relationship and, and maybe even be able to look at it in a way that's like, Hey, you know, after I work with this person for however long, like I want to stay connected with them still like 10 years from now. You oh know? yeah. Wouldn't that be amazing? That's, I mean, we're, we become buddies with people. I meet up with, I was in Mexico on vacation. I met up with a client just because I like meeting up with people like shy Mike is actually like, Hey, what's up? And we have a blast. Like, it's like such a fluid conversation. And yeah. that's like the stuff I, I, that's like my favorite thing. And it's funny because a lot of people are like, Oh my God, you're the CEO of the company and you have time to connect with clients. I'm like, this is what I do. Like I, we have a a business now where people have certain jobs and that like, you know, dealing with general business operations might not be what I need to do right now. I would much rather be building the, the business and the community and interacting with people and talking to the staff and stuff like that. than you know, calling our insurance agent, you know that's not yeah, fun absolutely <laughs> thanks yeah. Alessi, if he's listening no or when he listens. <laughs> i think uh i was i was listening to to gary v and he was talking about how he had um 
what is it, an executive heart officer, I think yep. is what it was. But I just thought that, I mean, that's what a cool concept, right? I mean, you know, whether that's, I mean, I think that's more targeted to all the employees, but, you know, even if there was another one, I don't know what the name would be, but that was targeted to making sure and instilling that every single coach and client is having this relationship and this experience that you want to be manifested. Yeah, we have, it's actually kind of funny, her unofficial title, uh, her name is Patty. She's our happiness fairy. She, um, notices things in the Facebook group uh, on people's Facebook pages and like surprise and delight. You know, we had someone get a new car and I was like, send her, send her a gas card. And Cindy or um, Patty writes the card and surprises her. Like that's super cool. I love doing stuff like that because I don't think enough people recognize their, their clients like that. To me, it feels good to do like nice stuff. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, it's like opening a door for somebody like right. most of the time it makes you feel good until maybe they walk away and don't say thank you. Then it, right. Uh. And it's, it's kind of funny because like a, a non-selfish act could be looked at as being selfish because we do it because we want to feel good. Yep. But, and that's kind of like even some of our marketing, you know, it's like if we could take care of people in the process of getting our name out there, cool, man, we don't have to pay for a Facebook ad. We'll send someone on vacation, make them happy. Everybody's cool. Yeah, that's awesome, man. So what are, I don't want, I don't, I don't want you to share all your secrets, obviously, but what are, what are, what are some of the things, you know, you mentioned the gas card. What are some of, some of these examples of ways that y'all go above and beyond for your clients? So, I mean, we've, we've had things like, um, we've sent rowers to people's houses. Um, we've sent people on vacation, uh, we've had surprise visits to clients. Um, you know, times are tough for somebody. We cover their session, all kinds of stuff. And it, it, the cool thing is it's not just us. It's not just Stronger You Corporate. It's the Stronger You community. Like someone might really be having a tough time in life and a member will be like, hey, Mike, I want to cover their session or, or I want to send them, you know, a, a get well card or something. It's the community is incredible. And I think a lot of that is why we're here today. Yeah, 100%. That's amazing. What, what do you think is, you know, just, and it might be hard to think, kind of think back, but I mean, y'all have a big community, y'all have a huge community now. What were like the levels, if you will, of like community? Like, like, I mean, obviously when it was just you, right. And then maybe when you have five or 10 on staff, like what, what did that evolution look like with, with the community? I mean, it just kind of multiplied. So I think when I first started the Facebook group, it was like 37 people or 44. For some reason, those numbers are sticking out. And then it just started like we would sign people on. We would throw them in there. They would all kind of see what the vibe was in the group and they would participate. They would help each other. They would share, you know, if they have a struggle and they needed help, they would post about it. Um, if they saw somebody needed help with whatever or if they wanted to inspire someone that just started, they would post. So it's just kind of how we run it and we set the tone. Like no one in there, and you know how the internet is. Everyone is just kind of evil, man. I mean, we had a post today. One of our clients was featured in, on Men's Health Online on Yahoo. And if you look at the comments, people are like, oh, all he did was lose fat. Or, oh, this is a blatant advertisement. Dude, I didn't even know it was being posted. I was, I had a friend from high school tell me about it and I was like, oh crap, this is awesome. But people generally on the internet, they're just not very nice people. And in the stronger you group, it's just a group of people that are so damn cool with each other that I think is so refreshing. And even in some other fitness groups, like, you know, I don't know, specific exercise equipment groups, people are kind of mean to each other. And in our group, like that doesn't fly and people know that. They know that we're like, as corny as it sounds, like we're Disneyland, man. Everybody's cool here. That's if awesome. you're not going to be cool, this place not, might not be for you. Yeah, I love that. I mean, community is everything, right? So, yep. I mean, that's, that's literally the foundation. So, what are you, I mean, you're a leader of a, a huge team, a huge community. What are you doing, you know, these days? What are you doing on a daily basis to ensure that you continue to lead from the front? <laughs> Basically like seven meetings a day. <laughs> no. um, man, we just have, we have tight schedules. We have a lot of organization now. 
Uh, I make sure that as corny as it sounds to lead by example, the team kind of knows what I expect. Um, and everything starts with the member, their experience, how efficient we are with them, how taken care of they are. I want to make sure my team is happy and they're taken care of. And I think what makes me really proud is this industry is extremely hard to make it in. Not a lot of people can make this full-time job. And we have so many people whose job is to literally make people happier. And that to me is absolutely incredible. Yeah. I love that, man. You know, I, I think another really huge component of that too is like knowing that we do everything remotely and knowing that, you know, you can reach so many people, but also like for the coaches, it's like, it's this interesting dynamic of like, man, they could actually travel, you know, they could go on vacations, they could work from really wherever they wanted to. And so it's just this, it's like this ultimate freedom plus your job is to, to help people. Right. And it's, it's like, how does it get any better than that? Dude, I, right, right. It's crazy to me because when you think about a job, you think like, what, what is the perfect job where you could make pretty good money, you can change the world and you enjoy it? Like, we got it. And that's like, I, I love it. I love that people can actually enjoy their work because as crazy as it sounds, like life is kind of messed up. Most people... They wake up and they do what they don't want to do all the time. Every single day they have to go do something they don't want to do. And I want this place to be a really cool place for people to work. Yeah, that's awesome, man. I love that. Well, dude, I, uh, I could probably talk to you all day long, but I definitely want to respect your time. I know you're a busy man. Where can everybody find you at and, and then also Stronger You? Um, my Instagram is mdola. Stronger you is at stronger you. My personal Facebook, Mike Dola. Um, our website is strongeryou.com. That's the letter U. Uh, pretty much anywhere. Google and you'll you'll find me in the company somewhere. Nice man, I love it. And last question for you: What are you? What are you? I mean, I guess we're a little farther into 2019, but uh, maybe I need to change this last question. But what are you most excited about for the remainder of 2019? Man, just fine tuning things like it's not even about growth for us. We are so like we say to our clients, be process oriented and what you want will come. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to perfect the company from the infrastructure side inside out and everything will be golden. And that's really what I'm really, really excited about is making what we already have even better. It's awesome. I love that. Well, dude, Mike, it was a pleasure, my man. Thank you dude. so much for taking the time. And thank uh, you so much. Yeah, we'll have to we'll have to continue this at some point. Maybe actually dive into some nutrition. <laughs> dude, I'm I'm totally down. We could talk about that one day too. <laughs> awesome, man.